and what around it was apart from a very very dodgy opening ceremony guys overly what do we think of that opening round of introducing the 2023 rugby world cup yeah for me i think it was good there was a, a lot of talking points bit of controversy but yeah definitely a lot to talk about yeah, there's never a dull moment in rugby. I think throughout the whole round, whole of the round, I think it was had moments of excellent kind of viewership, and it was a very, very good round. And yeah, I think it leads on to round two quite nicely. Yeah, I think the only dodgy thing you could talk about with the round is the national anthems because they they were they were horrible. But like, apart from that, like the actual rugby was good. First game, New Zealand versus France. I think that's the game that shocked the world because me and Kieran thought that New Zealand would sort of get back and show everybody why that why, why they're like the greatest rugby team of all time but they were basically just torn apart by France what were our takeaways from that game uh well for me I think obviously I did say France would win um not as much as attacking as I thought they would be I thought New Zealand would would be a lot more sort of effective when they had the ball but they weren't and they sort of did just play into France's hands a little bit so yeah France with the win nothing to I think job done nothing to get excited over but yeah job done for France um, yeah, I think New Zealand didn't really fire a shot. They weren't very clinical. And I think they'll look back at that game and say we should have won that. Um, you had France on the ropes in the first half quite easily. And they just didn't really capitalise on France's pressure that they put on them. So I think overall, New Zealand won't be too worried about that result because they can play them further down the competition. For France, yeah. it's a confidence builder. When I, when, I, when I first saw that Iwani break, I was thinking, damn, like, they might have France here. But then they just went to the boot so much. And, like, for me... As, as the games go by, I, I'm, I feel like I'm watching less and less of the All Blacks and more of just like a, a, a typical modern day rugby team. But it's mad because uh, Jeff Wilson was saying like the All Blacks are still like the 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 team to beat this tournament, still the favourites. But do we still think the All Blacks still have that hype behind them? Are they still this rugby team that people people do struggle to beat? Or are they, have they sort of been brought down to earth a bit? Mm, for me, I think... I think... I still would would easily see them in a final against France again. I I wouldn't put it past them to now sort of not rebuild but just improve massively on on this game and get get to a position where they can still win the World Cup. Yeah, there's no if buts or maybe. New Zealand need to now step up a game now, don't they? Really, they're in a World Cup. They don't want to be that kind of failure team. So I think for New Zealand, it's a matter of do or die now. They need to step on the gas. There's no questions asked. Yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, just who is your player of the game from that game? If I if I'm going to go first, my player of the game was Aaron Smith. I think I said in the prediction for the game, Dupont won't turn up for that game, and Dupont didn't turn up. And I think Aaron Smith proved why he's arguably a top ten scrum half of all time on Friday night, pocketing the world's best scrum half, a guy that people have had no answer to. He was just sensational that game. I think for me, the player of the round is I'm probably looking at a Thomas Ramos. Uh, they just got everything that they needed from him in terms of off the boot. Like, as we said, there wasn't a lot of attacking, not loads of opportunities to score, lots and lots of tries. And when it's a day like that, you need your kicker to be on point, And he was. Yeah, Aaron, again, I'm going to have to agree with Ty. Um, Aaron Smith was that guy. He, he took the best nine in world rugby and made him look average very, very easily as well. Aaron yeah. Smith was... Aaron Smith was him in that game. And that, that's all I can say on the matter. He was the best player on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. I think, I think. look, let's not let's not get too carried away with that All Blacks loss. Obviously, still still a way for them to come on. I think moving to the next game, which you guys will be gassed to talk about, and I'm probably not going to hear the end of, England beating Argentina, a George Ford, one of the best individual performances I've ever seen. What do we think of that game from England? How good, how good were they? 12, I mean, 27 points from the boot from George Ford. The only 27 points England scored, he got. I mean, he 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 was him again. He was he was my fly half of the tournament, uh, that first round. He was mm. him. He delivered on the biggest stage. He had huge composure. Three three drop goals half from the halfway. I mean, that's crazy to me. Like, he, he is him. George Ford is him. Yeah, I think the, that game, the situation they were put in, is sort of the dream mm. situation for George Ford. That is exactly where he's, he excels. A situation where you need... You need your territory. You need your points. He's he's just so composed. He doesn't panic. Like even with all three of the drop goals, I think a lot of other tens would have not taken those opportunities. And Ford has. So it'd be interesting to see the role that he plays further on in the, in the World Cup for England. One from the fifty as well, fifth halfway line, which which I, I looked at and I thought was absurd. But I think if you're England coach right now, if you're Steve Borthwick, who starts for you, Ford, Farrell, or Smith? Because Farrell's obviously captain, right? I feel like that's always going to be an issue with selection. Marcus Smith is good, but he hasn't got the experience. But with the performance George Ford just have, can you really afford to bench him 
and and not and, and not make him that consistent starting ten for throughout the rest of the tournament. I mean, it's it's a massive headache, and it's been a headache for the last few years now. I think it's just got a lot harder with Ford coming back. I think there there is still roles where Marcus Smith can play, for example, off the bench, or maybe you give him a start against Japan just because it's very attacking. But in terms of Ford or Farrell there's always going to be room. I think the only way you can get Ford in there is if you move Farrell to 12 and then you have to drop mm. either Lawrence, Marchant, you know, to Alangi. So it's an absolute headache. I, I don't think we should be like just trying to weigh it up. Ford is starting. There's no debate. Can we stop with the whole it's a headache kind of conversation? George Ford is him and he's going Kieran. to be in this ten. And Marcus Smith isn't and Farrell's too much of a liability. Ford is him and he's going to be on 10. He's captain. He's Kieran, 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 Kieran. Owen Farrell was captain of England, right? Through the team thick and thin the last 10 years, I think you start Ford and you start Farrell. I think you start both. No. Of them. You put... Can we start yes. with this? Can we... yes. No, we're not We're not doing this 10 and 12 axis thing anymore. We've seen against England. Uh, England's hardest game of the pool is going to be Argentina. We saw against Argentina, Ford doesn't need Farrell, okay? He can run a game. He can do everything he can. Uh, at, in the 10 shirt, steer on the team. He doesn't need Farrell outside of him to teach him like a dog. Ford is him. He has the composure to be that 10. I, I, I can completely agree with what Kieran's saying, but the one thing that you would look at is in a in a, when it gets to the knockout stages games, you've got Farrell, who's a very, very capable defender. Thank Ford you. is the sort of fly half that would get targeted a little bit. As much as he can defend, you can make a lot of metres, a lot of go-forward ball off running at players like Ford. So that that is something that the England coaches will have to look at. And R- make their Rowan, Rowan, what you've got to understand is at quarterfinals rugby, Farrell is a liability. He's a, he's a world-class oh player, world-class God. operator. He is a liability. Mm. He has gone to tackle school and now he's gone to another tackle school. And now he's gone to the fan. We have to be saying, is he worth being on the pitch? Is he that much of a liability in a quarter final game? I wouldn't start him. Simple. Oh my god. Okay. I god. wouldn't start him. It's not it's, crazy to say that. It's delusion at its finest, but just before we, just before we move on to the South African game, we I think we need to we can't I think it would be criminal for us to not talk about Argentina and how I think for me in the last four years, as good as England were, Argentina were just abysmal. They, they were like a 15 versus 14 situation. They needed a bigger foot in that game, but Checkers guys couldn't do that. Like, What were your thoughts on Argentina? Um, Argentina just, they never were that kind of team for me. I think they, they were the hardest game in that pool, but mm. not once at this World Cup or leading up to it. So I think England ha- didn't have the capability to beat them. I think Argentina are a team that still need to grow. They're in a very transitional period. So you and never I think bought England, the hype? Uh, no, I didn't buy the hype. I don't think Argentina ever had hope. I thought England were always going to win that pool game. Oof, big claims. I think yeah, I would say it's a blip for for Argentina. When you look at their team, they have a lot of impressive players. No one really stood up for them, and that's why I think it's a bit of a blip for them. But I wouldn't put it past them now to just build their confidence up, go through the tournament. You know, you've got your Japans, your Samoas. Good opportunity to get some confidence going into the knockout stages. 